More whiplash developments tonight in the Ukraine crisis. As we report at the top, a source familiar with the central question tells CNN that a Russian attack sometime this week is more likely than not. That sends a chilling message, as does the closing of the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv, with remaining personnel relocating west, presumably out of the reach of invaders. At the same time, the White House says a path for diplomacy remains open, and similar signals from Moscow brought the temperature down just a bit. And it's been back and forth like that all day, right up until airtime, as Russian forces continue to build up three sides on Ukraine. White House officials spent the day briefing top House and Senate lawmakers in both parties on where things stand. The tone afterwards, somber at best. This is a very dangerous situation. I think you also, at the same time, have to balance a second concern, which is just as important, and that is you know, how quickly something like this could escalate into something very dangerous and catastrophic. The only good news is the diplomatic uh, exchange continues. Uh, Putin today... I guess, indicated that he wanted it to continue. I'm looking for any positive news, and I think that's positive. Now, Senator Mark Warner, who chairs the Intelligence Committee, also took note of Putin's apparent offer while underscoring the growing threat. Quote, they could launch at any point, he said. Nothing, nothing I heard today dissuaded me from that. As a precaution, as we mentioned, Secretary of State Blinken today told a small number of remaining diplomatic personnel at the embassy in Kiev to temporarily relocate in the Secretary's words, due to the dramatic acceleration in the buildup of Russian forces. We learn, meantime, that Defense Secretary Austin will be heading to Brussels this week to shore up the Allies. And in Kyiv, Ukrainian President Zelensky and his wife posted a Valentine's Day video on social media showing, in his words, that we are together, we are home, and we are in Ukraine. This followed an earlier posting, which his office, his office later walked back, in which some wrongly interpreted that he was predicting the Russians would invade on the 16th, which is just two days from now. We have correspondents tonight on both sides of the Atlantic. Clarissa Ward is in Kiev. Caitlin Collins at the White House. I want to start with Caitlin. Caitlin, how is the White House viewing all of this tonight? Well, they're definitely concerned, and they can tell, you can hear in their language the way they're talking about the potential of an attack, that level of concern, and that came especially from the Pentagon today, when John Kirby was talking about the potential for an attack here and the way that they are intentionally using the language that they are. And we are told by a source familiar that they do, do believe a, a Russian attack is more likely than not, and if one does happen, it's likely to be more significant than it is to be insignificant. That is, of course, a lot of nuance there, and it remains to be seen what Putin would ultimately do. And officials have cautioned they don't believe he's yet made a decision based on what they know so far. But it does speak to the level of concern that they have here of whether or not this is actually going to happen. And they do have a sense here at the White House that very much an attack could happen as soon as this week. So, Caitlin, what's the latest you've learned about the closing of the embassy in Kiev? So this is notable because it had already been a pretty drawn-down presence. They had removed all non-essential staff, remember? They had told family members to go home uh, several weeks ago. But now that they've officially closed it, the lights were off, as you saw earlier tonight. They were in the process of, of drawing it down. It does show the level of concern they have about where an attack could happen. And it is in the capital city. They have moved those remaining diplomats in the country to uh, much closer to the border with Poland, where they believe it's a safer area. And so it does speak to the level of concern that they have. And the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said that he believes this is just a temporary uh, movement. They don't say how long that's going to, that's expected to last. But we should note, John, it does come with some criticism from the Ukrainian president who said he believed that nations who were moving their staff to that city closer to Poland, that they believed that that was kind of a short-sighted decision because if there is a Russian attack, there's going to be a Russian attack in Ukraine, and they don't believe it really makes a difference to move the embassy staff to where they've been moving them. Caitlin Collins at the White House, thank you very much. I want to go to Kiev now and CNN Chief International Correspondent Clarissa Ward. Clarissa, what's the atmosphere there right now, given the U.S. decision to close the embassy in Kiev, and after this you know, what the Ukrainian officials are calling ironic Facebook posts from President Zelensky where he mentioned a possible attack on the 16th. You know, John, it's really just like watching a surreal split screen. There is a huge discrepancy uh, from the alarm, the concern, the warnings that are coming from Washington and the way that people are behaving on the ground and the way that Ukrainian leadership uh, is handling this situation as well. You reference President Zelensky jokingly referring to the fact that, you know, he'd been told 
uh, or there had been reports, rather, that there would be an invasion on Wednesday the 16th. Well, now he's decided to call Wednesday the 16th a national holiday. It's going to be National Unity Day. People are going to fly flags, and they're going to sing the national anthem. The idea being that he's trying to calm people down, to stop people from panicking, and to really play down, ultimately, some of the threats that the U.S. intelligence community has been conveying to the Ukrainians. Now, underneath that, though, John, is the reality that there is clearly a very grim picture uh, taking place on the border, and there are now preparations beginning slowly and calmly in a way that's designed not to upset the Ukrainian people, but we heard from the mayor of Kiev today who talked about making sure that shelters are ready, bomb shelters potentially, if there was some kind of assault on Kiev. Uh, he talked about ensuring that evacuations would be planned and carried out in a precise way, uh, what to do if cell phone towers were taken out. We also heard from President Zelensky himself saying that he's going to increase uh, the salaries of Ukrainian armed forces by 30 percent, and he's also going to release some kind of a streamlined information service so that Ukrainians can have up-to-date, up-to-the-minute, and reliable, verifiable information. So on the surface, things seem calm, and there's a kind of rejection almost uh, of some of the rhetoric that we've heard from Washington, but underneath, preparations are underway, and there is tension, certainly. Of course, in any sense that President Zelensky would shift the messaging on Ukraine's plans or desire to enter NATO. So this is an interesting one, John, because over the weekend, the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK gave an interview where he appeared to imply that potentially Ukraine might be willing to forfeit its long desire to join the alliance uh, if they were able uh, to, you know, somehow help de-escalate the situation. He then wrote that back very, very quickly. Um, and since then, we have seen a number of politicians come out and categorically reject it. This morning, we heard from the foreign minister here saying we continue to pursue our path to NATO. We heard again from President Zelensky later in the afternoon reaffirming that Ukraine's commitment right now is to try to proceed on that path. But there have been rumblings privately and behind closed doors that potentially there could come a moment where Ukraine would come under pressure to at least make some kind of a statement to the effect that it is not their immediate intention to join NATO. Because the reality is that even if Ukraine wants to join NATO right now, it is not feasible for a number of complex reasons in the short term. And so this would kind of be an easy uh, concession, if you will. However, it would require a big climb down for President Zelensky, could be very difficult for his government to survive. And frankly, it's not even clear whether President Putin would accept it, John. No, but it is clear that I think a lot of people heard those comments in Ukraine, in the United States, at the White House, in Russia, at the Kremlin, with great interest, wondering if maybe there was a window opening just a little bit. Clarissa Ward, thank you so much for being there for us.